In this lecture, we are going to discuss problems which are based on Rolle's theorem. The proof of Rolle's theorem will be covered in some different video. So here we will discuss only the problems which are based on Rolle's theorem. So uh, we all know that what Rolle's theorem states that. So I have a function f which is defined on a closed interval a, b and it is a real valued function. And this f satisfies uh, certain conditions. The first condition is that f is continuous on closed interval a, b and differentiable on open interval d, b. So f is differentiable on open interval a, b. And uh, f of a must be equal to f of b. Then uh, we can certainly say that by Rolle's theorem, then there exists a C so such that this C belongs to open interval AB, such that the derivative at that point C will be equal to 0. So Rolle's theorem gives us a guarantee that you can find such a C such that the derivative at that point will be equal to zero right so now let's take one simple problem to understand this so let's take the function f to be on closed interval zero to pi and it's a real valued function i'm going to define the function fx equal to sin x and we are going to check whether this function satisfies the condition of Rolle's theorem if yes i'm going to find c using Rolle's theorem. If Rolle's theorem is applicable for this function. Okay. So let's look at the conditions. So let me say that f of x equal to sin x is a trigonometric function, sin x trigonometric function. We know sin x is continuous function on closed interval a, b. And uh, on here, the closed interval a, b is 0 to pi and uh, differentiable and it is also a differentiable function sin x is a differentiable function we know the, de the derivative of sin x is cos x so differentiable on the open interval 0 pi and then we'll check f of a equal to f of b so here f of a means f of 0 which is sin 0 sin 0 is 0 and f of b means f of pi which is sin pi and sin pi is also 0. Therefore, f of a means f of 0 is equal to f of pi. So, all the three conditions of Rolle's theorem are satisfied. Continuous, differentiable and open interval and uh, f of a equal to f of b. So, by Rolle's theorem, there exists a c belonging to open interval 0 to pi such that f dash of c is equal to 0. So we will now find that c. So we know that fx is equal to sin x. Therefore, f dash of x is cos x. And therefore, f dash c equal to 0 becomes so what does this equation become? f dash c equal to 0. So f dash c is nothing but f of f dash of x is cos x. So f dash c will be cos c is equal to 0. And when is the function cos 0? We know that cos pi by 2 is 0. So the value of c must be how much? c must be pi by 2. And this pi by 2 belongs to the open interval 0 to pi by 2. So the value of c in this problem is what is equal to pi by 2. Pictorically, this means that you have the function sin x in the interval 0 to pi. This is the function sin and it is beyond 0 to pi, it is like this. 
this is the function sign. So I'm just going to concentrate it on 0 to pi. So at pi by 2, this is the value of c. We see that the tangent to this curve is horizontal. Okay, so basically what role theorem finds out? It finds out such a point c so that if I draw the tangent to that curve at that point, that tangent will be a horizontal tangent means it is parallel to x-axis means the derivative at that point a line which is parallel to x-axis has slope 0. So this is the slope of the tangent. Derivative means slope of the tangent. Slope of the tangent which is f dash c is equal to 0. So means it's a line which is horizontal that is it is parallel to x-axis. Okay. Let's take uh, one more problem now. So let's take f of x equal to x minus a into x minus b in the interval a b, the closed interval a b. And I'm going to find c using Rolle's theorem. So this is again easy, this function fx f, which is x square minus a plus b x plus a b. This function is a polynomial function. And we know that all polynomials are continuous. Therefore, f is a continuous function. If you have any polynomial function, that is going to be a continuous function. And moreover, polynomial functions are also differentiable. So this is continuous in the closed interval AB. You can even differentiate a polynomial and it's differentiable in the open interval AB. <coughs> so what is f of A in this case? So f of A will be A minus A into A minus B. I'm taking this f. So this is zero. And f of B also is b minus a. So instead of x, I'm putting b here, b minus a into b minus b. So that is also equal to 0. So both the conditions are satisfied. So all three conditions are satisfied. f of a is also equal to f of b, right? And therefore, by rules theorem, there exists a c belonging to open interval a b such that f dash of c is equal to 0 and now we will find the c right so what i know is fx is uh, x square minus a plus b x plus a b so the derivative of this will be 2x minus a plus b x a plus b x will go away and therefore this means that f dash of c equal to 0 becomes so if i just replace the x by c i'm going to get that 2c minus a plus b is equal to 0 and therefore c in this problem is a plus b by 2 is what we have obtained and we know that if this is the end point a and b this is the interval a and b the midpoint of a and b is nothing but a plus b by 2 so it is c and therefore this certainly lies between it certainly lies inside the interval a to b the c should lie the c should lie inside the interval. It should not go outside the interval. It should not go like this. I must be able to find a C which is going inside the interval A, B. Right. Let's take uh, now, let's take a function f of x equal to say log of x square plus b 
square plus a b upon a plus b x i'm going to define it in the interval a b and i'm going to find the value of c using rolls theorem okay so first let's check whether these conditions are satisfied or not so clearly x square plus a b upon a plus b x this is a fraction of polynomials and this fractioning of polynomials i'm assuming is not equal to zero so this is not equal to zero so this is a continuous function and when i take the logarithm of continuous function so logarithm of a continuous function is also continuous function composite of continuous function is continuous log of this will also be a continuous function on the close interval a b and i can differentiate this function also so f is differentiable in open interval a b so let's go ahead and what is f of a now f of a is log of a square plus a b upon a plus b into a so i'm putting x equal to a which is log of a square plus a b upon a square plus a b which is log of 1 and log of 1 is 0 similarly when i put f of b and when i find f of b a similar calculation will again give you log of 1 and log of 1 will be equal to 0. So this means that f of a and f of b are same. Okay, and therefore I can write that by Rolle's theorem I can say that there exists a c such that f dash c is equal to zero there exists a c belonging to open interval a b such that f dash of c is equal to zero okay so <coughs> let's find that c now so what is f dash of x yeah so what is fx fx is here fx is equal to let me see what is f x square plus log of x square plus a b upon a plus b into x and i'm going to find the derivative of this so what is the derivative of log of something it is one upon x square plus a b upon a plus b x into the derivative of the inside function so i'm going to write d by dx of the inside function is x square plus a b upon a plus b x and this will become a plus b x upon x square plus a b into let's write the derivative of this now the derivative of this is v i'm going to use a quotient rule so a plus b x v into derivative of x square plus a b is 2x minus x square plus a b into the derivative of a plus b is a plus b x is a plus b divided by a plus b x the whole square so this is this big is the derivative of x so the equation f dash c equal to zero becomes so wherever there is x i'm going to write a zero now i'm going to write a c now and uh, eventually i'm going to get a plus b of c into a plus b to c square minus c square plus a b into a plus b upon something 
where I'm going to put C is equal to zero. So this person I will send it that side and make it equal to zero. So eventually I'm going to get what? Eventually I'm going to get A plus B into C into A plus B I can pull out common from these two people. So I will again get A plus B common. And what is left is 2C square minus C square minus AB is equal to 0. So this, this all these quantities, I'm going to push it on that side. And I'm going to make them 0. So here I'm, I'm somewhere I have to assume in the initial part, let me just write somewhere. Yeah, that it's A and B, A is positive. Okay, A is positive. Therefore, B is also positive. Okay, so this means that A is here, B is here, and they are positive numbers, so they are away from 0. So C is somewhere here, right? Somewhere C is between it. So if A and B are positive, and C is between A and B, then this C is also, C is also must be a positive number right because this is greater than zero so c is also positive so this is also positive this is also positive this term is also positive so i push them on that side and i'm just getting this equal to zero so i'm getting 2c square minus c square is c square minus ab is equal to zero because i'm dividing entire this entire term to zero so that became zero this means that c will become square root of ab so this c is actually the geometric mean of a and b in this problem okay and remember the geometric mean lies between the two numbers that you're talking so this num this number certainly lies between what certainly lies between a and b so this is the value of c in this problem okay Let's take one more problem now. So let me take f of x equal to say f of x be equal to sine x upon e raised to x. And let's take x in the interval 0 to pi. Let's say find c. So clearly sin x and e raised to x are continuous because sin is a continuous function, exponential is always a continuous function and this exponential is not zero, exponential is never zero. Therefore this fraction sin x by e power x, this function is also continuous we know that f and g are continuous f upon g is continuous only if g is not zero so this function is also continuous and it is also differentiable so let me say further f is differentiable because sin x and e power x both are differentiable in the interval zero to by open interval and uh, what is f of a here f of a means f of 0 and what is f of b f of b means f of pi f of 0 is sine 0 upon e power 0 sine 0 is 0 and f of pi is sine pi divided by e power pi sine pi is also 0 so by rolls theorem there exists a c in the interval open 0 to pi such that f dash of c will be equal to how much 0 so let's calculate the derivative first so what is the given function to us the given function let me write since fx is equal to sin x upon e raised to x let's calculate the derivative the derivative is by quotient rule is v into derivative of u minus u into 
derivative of v upon v square. So f dash c equal to zero becomes, so wherever there is a x, I'm going to write a c. So it will become e power c cos c minus e power c sine c divided by e power c whole square zero this person will go and multiply that and become zero so e power c or c minus e power c sine c zero e power c or c minus sine c zero but we know that this person can never become zero so who must be zero in this case multiplication is zero one of them is not zero so cos c minus sin c has to be zero so sin c is equal to cos c this means sin c by cos c must be one and tan c is one and tan is one if x is pi by 4, right? The point is pi by 4, c is pi by 4. And clearly this 0 to pi, in the interval 0 to pi, pi by 4 is, this is pi by 2, so pi by 4 is somewhere here, one fourth of that. So this point is c, which is pi by 4. So this is pi by 4. So this certainly this pi by 4 lies in the interval 0 to pi. So here the value of c in this problem will become pi by 4. Okay. Let's move on to one more question. Say so let's take f of x is equal to root of x minus a into b minus x in the interval a b and let's try to find the c using Wolf's theorem. So clearly this function x minus a into b minus x this is a polynomial function and then I'm taking the root of the function and that is also continuous provided the thing which is inside is positive okay, and it is also differentiable in the open interval a b it's continuous on closed interval a b therefore the function and what is f of a f of a is equal to a minus a into b minus a which is zero plus a minus a is zero f of b is also b minus a into b minus b so that is also equal to zero so we can apply rolls theorem here and therefore by rolls theorem i can certainly see that there exists a c in the open interval a b such that f of f dash of c is zero let's find the derivative now what is the derivative f dash x it is 1 upon 2 root x minus a into b minus x into the derivative of this x minus a into b minus x and this will become 1 upon 2 root x minus a to b minus x into derivative of this is x minus a as it is derivative of b minus x is minus 1 plus derivative of x minus a is 1 and b minus x as it is this is the derivative value and let's put c so therefore the equation f dash c equal to 0 becomes 1 upon 2 root 
c minus a into b minus c into square root of into bracket minus of x plus a plus b minus x x is c so what if we like replace here by c so I'm getting minus c plus a plus b minus c is equal to zero and therefore this entire term will go and multiply there and it will become zero so i'm just left with minus 2c plus a plus b is zero and your 2c is a plus b and this implies c is again the average of the two numbers a plus b by 2 so c is here so a is in this is the interval a b and midpoint is c which is a plus b by 2 okay so there are some problems in which rolls theorem is not applicable so let's take f of x is equal to mod x okay is rolls theorem applicable to this function on the interval let's take the interval minus 1 to 1 hmm? so we know that in the interval minus 1 to 1 the function mod x look like this and this is the fun graph the function mod x so clearly from the picture itself we can see that the function f is continuous the graph is not broken continuous on the interval minus one to one but f is not differentiable at which point the function is having problem at zero you see that there is a sharp turn there is a vertex here there is a sharp turn in, in the function so f is not differentiable at which point it is not differentiable at the point x equal to zero so this means that the second condition of rolls theorem is not satisfied Therefore, Rolle's theorem is not applicable for the function fx equal to mod x. Okay, not necessary every time you have to apply Rolle's theorem or Rolle's theorem is applicable. It's not a necessity, right? So with this. We finish this topic of problems on rules here.